Welcome to PDMA Corporation, home of the MC Emacs. I'd like to thank you for joining us as we continue along in our presentation series. Once again, we have the Vice President of Product Development, Mr. Noah Bethel. Hello from sunny Tampa, Florida. And I am Todd Gunderson, the Vice President of Sales and Marketing. And we have a previous video to this where we talk about the release of the PDMAI. So if you get a chance, I would certainly encourage you to go and look at that. But Noah, I'll just say once again, kudos to you and your team. This is a great technology coming out at the right time. You're absolutely right. We are excited about it, and there's no time like the present. It is it is delivering a need for the industry. Right, and we feel very confident that this will meet the needs that the industry is calling for. So, as we mentioned a little bit earlier, some of the highlights from the previous video is, once again, it looks almost the same size as an MTAP2, so it should fit in the same little area that the MTAP2 was in. You can take the voltage from the MTAP2. Yeah, if you want to keep them both, you could, and then use a common voltage, correct? Right. And then it has an on-off. We didn't really discuss the on-off status, secure power for long-term outages. Right. Yeah. That's it, pretty cool. It is. And, and to keep in mind, the, the power, as you mentioned, uh, for the most part, everyone's choosing power over Ethernet. What's the most popular? It does have the DC power supply as an alternate. And uh, But for the sake of, like, you know, certain companies may require this unit because it's permanently installed and it's been tested to, to you know, to standards, uh, does not require calibration after installation. But there are some companies that are going to want to calibrate it anyway. And for that, we have the ability to, you know, de-energize the device, uh, send it back to PDMA for a full calibration if, if the company any ISO requirements, let's say, demands it. All right. And then we can accept up to 600 volts in our high voltage SCM. Yeah. One of the things that's interesting is, you know, our portable technology went to 1,000 volts, right? We went from 600 to 1,000. Well, with the PDMAI, now we're full transducer capable. Mm -hmm. We really have no limits anymore. No limits. All the way down to DC and anything higher that, uh, than 600 volts is going to be transducer. So it's very flexible. And as we mentioned, it's 12 channels. So it gives you a tremendous amount of opportunity to put other things in auxiliary inputs, RTD, things like that, as well as line side and load side drives. So we're pumped about that. Excellent. And so we didn't really discuss in the, we t discussed in a roundabout way the benefits, but one thing that you had mentioned in the other video was event alert coming to your cell phone. It's huge, right? The fact that, and, and, I, and I think it's not just huge and, and important, it is required, it's critical. If you're gonna permanently install the technology, and what we didn't want is for it to disappear and then people forget about it. So what we're going to be, as we're monitoring your assets and your motors for 20, you know, we're 24 hours a day. We're kind of keeping an eye on it for you, right? An eye, right. Keep an eye on that motor. And uh, that's a big deal, right? Uh, you know, for 24 hours. And so and if we see something, we say something. Right. The the historical fault zone analysis and the, the, the automated analysis that's built into your MC Gold program still exists here. And so we're going to automate the analysis to some extent uh, to give you a high level alert. So your phone's going to go off, say, hey, we have a concern about power quality or possibly a power circuit or a rotor issue. And so one of our KPIs goes into a, some form of alarming condition. That should be known immediately, and that's what we do, right? Absolutely. You'll know immediately that something has gone into alarm and allow you to, to start focusing on this asset uh, while you're instead of you know whatever you were involved in at the time. And you can see the whole list here. We don't have to really go through it for you. You guys can read it on the screen. But uh, I just wanted to bring that out, that event alert is something really uh, cool. Because we is. have not had an app on our phone. Mobile apps PDMA. with the PDMA logo. I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, right. And the ability, to, if you're out on a boat fishing. Exactly. Not You hear that a lot. That's always a big deal. Uh, that That's uh, definitely not, uh, you know, you see that on the commercials and the advertisements. Uh, even if you're fishing, you, you'll know if something big happens to one of your critical assets. Right. So we have here, uh, we have the uh, synchronous motor that we're going to talk about. So this is an actual, another beta case study we that call we it talked luck, about. karma whatever you know we talked about the last case study we installed in the in the in the pipeline industry and was able to identify a rotor anomaly over 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 trending and uh here we go we install into and, and you know we've always talked about the six fault zones you know the power quality power circuit installation state of rotor air gap i say that very fast but we always talk about is there another fault zone we would call machine train and and that's what we're going to walk into with this case study Excellent. So this is at a, a cement facility. It is, yeah. It's a raw mill motor. Um, this is where we placed it on there. One and two. 
It's the beauty of what is the song from uh, Sesame Street? Sesame Street. One of these things is not like the other. It's a great uh, reliability tool. We say it all the time. It's trend. Uh, having like assets and comparing data to those like assets are so crucial. Powerful. It's very powerful. So this is a raw mill, which is kind of the initial entry of material. Taking very rough material and smashing it to a point where it's usable. Where you have either three rollers or four rollers. And this is kind of the process that we're talking about here is the product comes, the raw material goes in and then he goes through these rollers on the bottom there and it just pulverizes right. it, right? Those rollers are massive. They're, they're, they're heavy impact. And in this situation, although the picture shows three, in real life at this raw mill, there was four of those grinding rollers. And so when you first started to collect this data, it was concerning to you, correct? It was, yeah. It, without, with, with One of the beauties of having so many assets and so many, you know, looking at so many situations is, you know, you can go look at the, the PMA history of raw mills and say, wow, are, are, look how varied the load is. I mean, you know, when you think of the application, you think it's a little bit of loading, but it made us nervous. It was nice to compare to another like mill. So you have this on raw mill one and you're like, uh-oh. Or we have a problem. And then you look at raw mill too and you say, oh, it's the same thing. Exactly. And then I look at, I call tech support and say, hey, you got some raw mill examples. We look at some of the other historical raw mills from semen around the world. And this is a very common operation. And once again, I'm just going to highlight the fact that this is almost the same data as what you would have collected through the Emacs technology on the MC Correct. Emacs. Everything looks the same. Yep. So this is our results page, and you're showing here uh, a current imbalance with low loading on the motor. Right. We got matching current and impedance imbalance with a 60% load. Not uncommon. Right. And then 40% on raw mill too, so it shows you the uh, the also a current imbalance as well. And then once the low loading of the motor uh, goes away, you start to lose some of that, or in this case here, it's there on the right-hand side. Left-hand side is 74%. So you can see the differences between low loading and high loading. Mm -hmm. And this is our time domain. Interesting. Yeah, so one of the things when we start focusing on the demodulated spectrum, and that really breaks into the machine training capability, allows you to start to identify and band alarm frequencies of interest. In this situation, we were able to call the end user, get a little bit more knowledge about the application, find out that there are four rollers, that the vertical shaft coming up out of the gearbox is at 33 RPM, and having a little bit of information and running it through the calculations makes it easy to band alarm these interesting frequencies. And knowing that like, we wouldn't know the gear ratio, so you had to find that out as well, right? right? Right. We could have guessed, you know, but it's better just to get a little bit of information up front and uh, and, go and they could have got that from their vibration folks. Absolutely, well. um, usually that is where most of the information does come from. They've already gone through Which the homework. We encourage that. We do encourage that correlating between technologies because it's you know it's hard to argue with an on on the spot accelerometer, which is always going to become your sort of your first, you know, line of defense in machine train analysis. But when you have this type of information coming to you from the electrical side, man, it's great correlative information. And so we see here on raw mill two, same thing. Same frequency bands uh, looking for the similar frequencies and they're just not there. And so we started to wonder why are the, why is the four times and eight times, the one times and two times multipliers of the, of the not the gear mesh, but the roller frequency associated with the secondary shaft. Uh, it, was, it was an amazing difference in terms of the amplitudes and the, and the, and the visibility of it. So we weren't able, so what happened was then as you as the process went through, it cleared itself up. It did. One of the things that when we brought it to the attention of the of the motor owner, uh, we said, hey, we're seeing some big time, four times, you know, uh, indicators. And they we were able to link it to the platform where the rollers are rolling across. So there was damage or actually it was material on the platform that was hitting every roller on the way by. Eventually it cleared itself. And when it disappeared, we were it made sense. But to, what if it didn't? You know, what right. if it was a permanent injury on the platform where the rollers were rolling? Um, they need to know that. And we actually also uh, solicited some information from other personnel. I, I remember having an expert come in here and I asked him about that. And he said, that's quite common to have build up, but then over time it just kind of eases itself up and then you, it, it goes back to normal levels. But what if it doesn't? 
That's the question. Right. If it continues, it's going to injure, either damage the roller or it's going to make a less a less ideal product going into the or finish mill. Or that plate is off balance or something. Yeah. If, if a material other than like the rock product, you know, let's say it was a piece of metal or something got in there that damaged the roller or damaged the platform, this is where we know we'll be able to see it. And, uh, you know, building those band alarms and, and, and what, we're, what we're really looking forward to is building those band alarms into the auxiliary KPIs. Mm -hmm. So you'll actually have it built into the alert system, you know, so your mobile app will even tell you when something erroneous is happening. Right. And then having knowledge of the system allows you to say, okay, this is normal. We expect this. There's a heavy load coming through. Or, hmm, this isn't normal. We need to do some further evaluation. And because it's a cloud-based technology, giving administrative access, or not administrative, but credentials to your local shop or, or your service team that knows this application, say, hey, can you back us up on this? Can you take a look? And they can be anywhere in the world and give you some, you know, some heads some up. Some advice. Yeah, it could some be advice. another facility within the semen industry that you share the data with. But cloud Even allows Even PDMA, that. you can send that information to PDMA, and we can help we, you out well, as well. We do that. That's exactly. what we do. That's what we do. Well, Noah, thank you for your uh, insight into today's uh, PowerPoint, PowerPoint and case study. Another case study derived from PDMAI technology. This is going and it's trending in the right direction, I can tell you that. Uh, and we hope our viewers, our listeners, gain something out of today to make their tomorrow a little bit better. Uh, until the next time we get out and talk to you, like to say good day to you, stay safe out there, and have a great day.